my name is Babwa, and I'm the CEO and founder of BAM Labs, and I'm so excited to be a part of the Lagos Leather Fair this year. BAM Labs is essentially a digital fashion company that specializes in digital-only media for fashion brands. We create virtual images, animations, and 3D assets that brands can use for marketing purposes, social media, and for their website. My love for fashion and technology began at a very young age when I would play dress up games on the computer all night long, just creating scenarios in my head, dressing up the dolls in like whatever I wanted to put them in. So this kind of fueled my, my interest in fashion design as a whole. I was very lucky to have supportive parents who allowed me to go into this field. So I started off in Ghana at Just Have a Real College of Creative Design for six months, and then I moved on to San Francisco to get my bachelor's degree in fashion design. And this is where I was able to learn about Cloth 3D and, and you know, further my knowledge on fashion and technology. So I remember I would always, I would always like ask my teachers like, what can we, what, are there any technologies or any like softwares that we can use to create patterns? to you know, create mock-ups, you know, something that would help us not waste so much paper and fabric and time. Um, and they, always, they would always say, yes, we do, but you know, I, don't, I don't think it was readily available to us at the time. So a few years later, they introduced a class on fashion technology where I learned how to use Gerber and Clothe 3D. This really changed how I looked at like fashion design and how I looked at sustainability as well. I really like to differentiate myself from like the norm. I think I feel like everybody expected me to go into fashion design, to design a collection, do a fashion show. Like, you know, they just expect there's like a map for everyone who does fashion design. And I just really felt like there was something else for me, um, something more interesting, something that people didn't know about. and it was Clothe 3D. So I went deeper into that. Um, one of my first jobs out of college was using Clothe 3D at a fashion company. So I had a lot of experience in that for about almost a year. So after this, I moved back to Ghana and decided to start Balm Labs, do my own thing and do it my way. Um, and also just like make it more available to small, medium brands um, because a lot of them did not know about it and it was only available to the larger brands such as Adidas and Nike. Um, so yeah, and I also thought it would make brands way more sustainable than they are. A lot of brands forget that sustainability is also about the process in which your clothes are being made, like how much paper you're using, how much water you're using, how you're contributing to the carbon dioxide emissions like we already know that fashion design is one of the largest contributors to carbon dioxide emissions and Pro 3D limits this because you can do everything on a computer um, including your sampling your editing your um, 3D prototyping even down to like textures and graphics all in one place and all in like much less time than you would normally use Moving forward as a continent, we need many more people who want to differentiate themselves from the normal path that a fashion enthusiast takes, such as fashion design, um, styling, blogging, or like going on to create your fashion brand, do a fashion show, and possibly create an, you know, like an e-commerce website. We need more people who will, you know, take take a different path to bring more interesting things to the you know the fashion industry in Africa. A great way to do this would be to implement technology into your design process or to even learn more softwares that um, help create 3D assets. And it's a great way to make money because a lot of brands are looking to this because it is the future and it's I mean we're already we're already doing it, especially because we were all forced to think of new ways to market our products this year, think of new ways to just, you know, like attract your customer. Um, so a lot of brands use technology to do this. So there are a lot of job opportunities that people can look towards. A great way to do this would be to start learning new, new um, softwares and new ways of implementing technology into fashion 
there's so many different ways like such as 3d printing or even printing your textiles or printing jewelry glasses like nowadays even printing 3d printers like that's amazing to me um, so yeah there's just so many different things to do even within the softwares there are um, things like people who will texturize or people who will just do the patterns and someone who will put the patterns together like there's so many little different things that I feel like people can contribute um, to fashion and technology that we may not know about now one thing I find so intriguing about combining fashion and tech is being able to combine the physical world with the online world just being able to think of something almost anything that you probably wouldn't be able to do in real life um, you know it's definitely possible to do it on a software you can create like the most outrageous thing you could ever think of um, this is something we did with Tongoro Studio we created um, a world that the models were in with all their different outfits and created different scenes um, and it was just so amazing how the designer of Tongoro could, could you know, tell me exactly what she wanted her model to look like, down to the facial features, skin tone, height, um, body size, like everything. We just created her from scratch, and then um, you know, put the clothes on her, put clothes together, put everything together without even seeing each other. That's that's another thing that I find so amazing. Like I don't have to see her in person to create something together. Um, so yeah, that's like another thing that technology brings. You connect with people all over the world virtually <clears throat> and without having to see them. So the way in which you were able to combine the physical world with the online world with Tongoro Studio was using 3D rendering softwares such as Clo3D, Jazz Studio, Blender, and Rhino 3D. So we use this to create the clothes, to create the models, to create the jewelry, and even to create like the other bits and pieces that were in the scene. So one thing I really loved, one thing I really love about um, fashion and technology is how we were able to create our models from scratch. You know, like decide how we wanted their hair to look, decide how we wanted their eyes, nose, lips, like everything, height, skin color. It was all down to what um, you know we had discussed or like what she wanted. Um, so this really brought like some excitement to the project. Um, also, another thing was being able to, you know, make changes really quickly. So if we did a shot and we wanted wanted to change one thing, it wouldn't take too much time. Or if we wanted to change like a seam or a sleeve, we would just do it in minutes. In recent years, brands have been using virtual images and animations to kind of gauge how their consumer will react to a product they put out. So, for example, we'll create a 3D rendering that looks really, you know, it looks so realistic that the, the, the average person who is not in this field won't be able to tell. So they will do this and kind of gauge how, um, how if it's going to sell and basically collect data around it and use that data to determine how to produce. So in that you waste less resources, way, m less time, less resources, less money in production and yeah, like everything is just more sustainable. So a lot of fashion designers and you know fashion enthusiasts might be wondering like what does this mean for the fashion industry? Like you know what are the limits? What can we do with this? How can we be a part of it? Um, and I think there are so many ways to be a part of it, even as a consumer. So firstly, as a designer, you will be able to collaborate with people outside the fashion industry. You know you can collaborate with people in the three D industry. Um, to create like new ways of marketing, to create, to create new worlds, to create new ways that your consumer can engage with your product. And a way that the consumer can be a part of this is through wearable tech. So like this is, this is something really new, um, but I think it's really popular in the industry. It's basically wearing um, something that doesn't exist. So if you like, let's say you go on the Bomb Labs page and you see a shirt that we've created and you really love it, you can wear it, but I mean, it won't be physical. You'll send in a picture and it will be overlaid onto, onto the picture you've sent us. So it'll look like you're wearing it. And this will make much more sense in the future when um, you know, we start to share how we're using this technology. But I think it's something really, really exciting. And it's a, 
it's an amazing way for a consumer to be a part of the brand. So I reached out to people outside of the fashion industry um, to find out what they wanted to know about 3D fashion and technology, just to like, just to help everyone get a more a better understanding of this because it's very new. We're still we're still um, like finding our way through this. Um, and finding more ways to connect with other people, finding new ways to um, help brands connect with um, you, the consumers. So one question that I got was, do you think that 3D printing will someday mean that everybody can print their clothes? So designers are already printing clothes. Like this designer, um, Iris Van Heppen, is printing clothes that go on the runway, but I think definitely eventually we probably will be able to create our clothes from home I mean we're already able, we're already able to um, uh, print our jewelry you can do this at home if you if you have the knowledge um, of 3d printing so yes I think it's something that is very possible um, another question was how different is it in from actually drawing with a pencil and pen when you sketch when you sketch um, an idea is it's only in 2d you're not seeing what it will look like on a body you're not seeing the drape you're not seeing the fabric you're not seeing how someone is going to move in it but when you use cloth 3d to create to to do your sketch to just create your thing on a model you are essentially going to see all these things at once you know the drape the fit the silhouette the color everything in like a matter of minutes or hours, depending on how complex your outfit is. It's much less time consuming to just go straight ahead with Pro 3D to design something as opposed to just sketching and then now going in to look for your fabric, going in to look for your textiles, going in to look for your model, your sample. Whole lot of time, you know, saved when you use Pro 3D. Do you believe that one day, um, this technology will render models redundant. Um, I don't think so. Like as I said before, I don't think this technology will, um, you know, run models redundant because you can use a person's likeness for your project and still pay them. And they can be because of this, they can be in multiple places at once. So, for example, you can have your model in who lives in Ghana, but you're using her for shows in Nigeria, you're using her for shows in Kenya, you're using her for shows in South Africa, like. At all at once, and you know you can still you can still like feel her presence because it's her likeness, it's her body shape, it's her height, it's her face, her eyes, like it's it's her. So it's not. I don't think it's taking anything away from them. If anything, I think it's gonna create even more jobs for them in like all over the world, and they do not need to move from their home, which I think is just perfect. <laughs> Um, another question, any advice for someone starting out or looking to go into this? You need a lot of patience. It is, it sometimes can be a little, um, what's the word, like a little tedious, um, especially, you know, creating very interesting shapes and silhouettes. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's so worth it. And it's so satisfying seeing your hard work, like become something even, you know, bigger than you thought it would be. Um, I think this question was really interesting. Um, what, in your opinion, is the earliest example of fashion technology? Hmm. I think it was probably when people were like taking pictures. I think that was like, um, you know, fashion technology. You could consider that as fashion technology at the time, um, or maybe even um, when when they started. Um, using Gerber technology for to create 2D patterns. I don't know what came before that, but that's the earliest form. I think AutoCAD. Yeah, you can also use AutoCAD for 2D um, for 2D patterns or even Illustrator. So there were a lot of things before, but they didn't really translate into 3D prototyping until um, softwares like Clo 3D and Marvelous 3D came about. Um, so yeah, I would say Gerber or just the 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 camera so in in general um, fashion technology is a very new industry that is still growing and um, we're still learning new things all the time even I'm still learning new things every day with every project that I'm working on so um, 
with that said like you know there's so many job opportunities that people can find in this industry or people can kind of go into um, another thing is that if you are a designer or you own a fashion brand that is looking to be more sustainable a great way of implementing this would be to go into um, you know fashion and technology to start implementing flow 3d into your design and production process because it will save you money time resources um, it would also make your brand way more relevant in the world we live in today we use technology i mean from when we wake up to when we go to bed this is this is our world now so you know it's it's the way forward basically thank you so much to the lagos love affair for having me this has been an amazing experience and i look forward to the coming years